Hey guys, my name is Pixie. Today you'll learn how to create two different styles of toggle menus in App Inventor. We'll start with a simple example and move on to a slightly more complex version in the second half of the video. Add a horizontal arrangement component to the viewer. I've added a background image and made sure that the height is 50 pixels and the width fills the entire parent. Next, add a button, delete its text contents, and add the plus icon as the button's image. Drag another horizontal arrangement to the right side of the plus icon. Add whatever you want here. This will be your actual menu. So perhaps you'd like labels or different icons, whatever the case may be. I'm just using three buttons with the house, profile, and information icons as button images. I like to rename everything, including my layout components. So notice that I've called the outer horizontal arrangement container and the inner horizontal arrangement I've named menu. The button names also correspond to their icons. Lastly, uncheck the visibility option for menu. This will automatically hide the contents within this horizontal arrangement when we start the app. In the design, we set the default for button menu to be the plus icon, and we hid the menu component. So here's the easy version. All we have to do is set the visibility of menu to true or false, and that will show and hide all of our menu icons. Create a procedure named toggle menu and add an if else statement. Here we'll say if the menu is currently invisible, then show the menu. Otherwise, if the menu is currently visible, then hide the menu. We can call this procedure using the button menu.click event, but I also want to change the menu button image. In this example, we use plus and minus to visually represent expanding and collapsing the menu. So when we display the menu, we'll also display the minus image, and when we hide the menu, we'll display the plus image. Now you can run the app in the emulator or AI companion. If there are no mistakes, you should be able to toggle your menu on and off. Let's hide the old example and grab another horizontal arrangement, which we'll use as a new container. I'm setting this container to flush everything to the right side of the screen, and I'm going to need some padding to the right of the canvas and above the container. As you saw previously, I typically create padding within my images, but occasionally I use invisible components. I like to use a square image with a transparent background. This invisible image is 10 by 10 pixels, so I don't have to worry about setting the width and the height in the image properties. My canvas is exactly 60 pixels wide by 160 pixels tall. A canvas will allow you to layer images on top of each other. Start with the background image. In this case, my background image width is the same as the canvas and the height is 10 pixels smaller. So I can set the X and Y property of this image sprite to 0, 0. I'm going to lay an image sprite over the background. I'm using this image sprite as a button, so I'll call it button settings and set its X and Y properties to 0, 0 as well. The next two image sprites are also acting as buttons. I've created padding within these images to be the exact width of the canvas. This allows me to set the X value to zero, so I don't have to worry if the image sprite is perfectly aligned in the center of the background. I can then set the Y values to whatever I think looks nice. Set BG settings height property to zero. I'm also going to push this background down about 10 pixels, just in case a piece of it is showing at the top. Then hide button music and button information. Add two clock components to the viewer, call them expand and collapse. Uncheck each of the options in the clock's properties and set their timer intervals to zero. Create three variables named menu items list, BG settings height, and animation increment. Menu items list will be an empty list by default. BG settings height is the maximum height for the settings menu background. In this case, my background image is 150 pixels tall. So I set this variable to 150. The next variable will determine how quickly we animate the background. And you'll see why we're using a variable instead of the timer's increment value in just a minute. Next, create the initialize list procedure. This procedure has become a default of mine. It's something I include in almost every app. Basically, we're going to populate our menu items list with items that we want to appear in our menu. So increase this list to have two items and add the component names for button music and button information. I'm only using two menu items for this example, but if you have five menu items, you would increase the size of this list to have five items. Pretty simple. Next, let's create the event that handles the menu toggle. Grab the touched event for button settings. Instead of basing the toggle on visibility, this time we're gonna base it on the height of the background image. So we target an animation based on whether BG settings height is zero or whether BG settings height is equal to the variable BG settings height, which we declared earlier as 150. So if we click on the settings button and the background image is tiny, then we need to expand it or make it larger. 
We can do that by enabling the expand timer. If we click on the settings button and the background image is larger, then we need to collapse it or make it smaller. We can do that by enabling the collapse timer. Next, grab the events for each timer. These blocks will automatically execute when their timers are enabled. So start with the expand timer. Basically, we're going to animate the background image expanding over time, but we need a way to tell the timer to stop when it reaches a certain point. So create an if statement that says when BG settings height is equal to the variable BG settings height, then turn this timer off. So as this menu increases in size, we also need to see the menu items. We're going to loop through our menu items list. Grab an any component for an image sprite's visibility. Set the component to item, which will be the current index in the loop, and set the value to true. So instead of copying and pasting set button music dot visible to true, we're going to set every item in the menu items list to true all at once using a list. This may seem silly for only two menu items, but what if you had 25 menu items? It'd be crazy to copy and paste that block 25 times. So get in the habit of recognizing patterns in your programming so that if you ever need to make changes to your apps, you can do so easily by editing one block instead of 25. Now let's quickly finish off this event and add an else statement. We'll set BG settings height to BG settings height plus the animation increment. Since we're going to reuse this block chunk, I'm going to create a procedure called cycle menu with one attribute called boolean. Then I'm going to move this loop into the cycle menu procedure and change the value from true to boolean. Now I can call this procedure and pass the value true. So let's recap quickly. If the background image is 150 pixels, then stop the timer and set all of our menu items to be visible. Otherwise, set background settings.height to the current value of BG settings.height plus the animation increment, which we declared earlier as 10 pixels. So each time this clock ticks, which is very fast because the clock timer interval is set to zero, then the background settings height will increase by 10 pixels until it reaches 150 pixels. Then it will stop increasing in height. So that's done. Now finish off the collapse timer. In the previous event, we showed the icons after the animation completed, but in this time we're going to hide the icons before the animation starts. So call the cycle menu procedure and pass the variable false. This will cycle through our menu items and hide each of them. Now we say if BG settings height equals zero, then turn the collapse timer off. Otherwise, we're going to set BG settings height to be equal to the current value of BG settings height minus the animation increment. So we're doing the opposite in this event. We want to make the background smaller until it reaches zero pixels in height, and then we turn off the timer. You can now run your app and test it for any mistakes. The gallery link is provided in the video description below if you need to download the app for additional assistance. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, and that's all for now. Have a great day. Bye!